going to be really exciting today. It's exciting every week anyway, but you won't regret watching it today. We'll be right back. It's time for the woman on the move, a female entrepreneur really pressing on towards her goal. Let's see who she is. Eva Benning said at age 15, she was raped by an unknown man on her way home one evening, but she could not tell her father for fear of being beaten. We children, we are brought up to be seen but not to be heard. I was so afraid because my father would beat us so much. And I remember getting into the house and my father chasing me down the street with a cane. I ran again to another house where I was going to seek refuge. And when I got there, I got raped by the next person there again. After that, I ran again because I thought, okay, I ran to a person that we knew. But when we got there, they rang my father. And again, for the fear of my father, I ran again. I ran to uh, another people that I knew. But when I got there, they were sleeping. So it was one of their sons outside, like the garage area. And I desperately needed to sleep. I was hurt. I was torn. Everything. And I had to, and I got raped by him again. So in one night, I was raped six times. And after that, to be honest, it went completely blank how I even get back to school, to university. So I think it's about two, three days afterwards I managed to get back to St. Monica's. I was there. My father turned up at school and he, I was called in front of my house mistress and he beat me. He beat me so I can remember. I can remember his feet kicking in my stomach, everything else. And because of that, my house mistress, I think she went and she told the whole, um, like all the teachers and all of that. Then I started having harassment for the male teachers. So in the middle of the night, sometimes I'll be called, and in my school, secondary school, St. Monica's, I'll be called and I'll go there, and there'll be like one of my teachers lying down naked, saying, do I want to come and have sex with them? And I'd run. She said at home, it was an embarrassment, and at school, she had a name. Eva said she later realized her biological mother lived in the United Kingdom and traveled there thinking all was going to be well, but that did not happen. My mother had a boyfriend um, and he started, he was very nice and, you know, he would sit a lot of time with me and, you know, at my work and studies and everything. And basically what he was doing, he was grooming me. So he groomed me to sexual abuse. I went into sexual abuse for about a year. Um, desperately and because she was like affording all the financial things for us again one of the things in culture that we have you know oh uh, I had this warm hug I don't know what I can't explain that she's like my spirit every time I go down something comes up and sort of lifts me up and I threw the tab and I thought okay what do I do so almost about 17 and a half 18 I packed my bags I didn't know anybody in England and I had to live alone the 50-year-old mental and learning disability nurse said she lived with depression and with suicide on her mind. I lived with depression, I lived with suicide thinking, I had relationships, I put myself in situations that I could almost be abused because that's the cycle you know, that's a psychological cycle you fall into. That. And at that time I was almost 30. So you can imagine all these issues have been carrying on. I've been doing self-destructive behavior. She urged churches and other organizations to lead the way. I've had a lot of psychological help and I, this is also the issue that we need to have in place. When people come and they say they've been abused, where do they go to? Yeah, and where, where are they supposed to go to go and go and get the help? And this is why I'm saying the church needs to be equipped. The church has to also agree that, you know, if someone comes and is a perpetrator in church, we don't move them to another place. We need to sort out all the issues of that. So we need the church, we need the schools, we need our parents, and we need the justice criminal system also to come into place. And we need places for where kids or people who are very, uh, what do you call it, being abused, they can be safely moved to. So it's a huge package that we have to look into. But at least I hope it's a start. I hope that I can sit here and I can begin a start and say, you know what, you are not alone. You should not be ashamed, my dear. My sister, my brother, my auntie, my mother, my uncle, my niece, it is not your fault.
Our winning woman for today is Reverend Mrs. Rita Tando. She's the co-pastor at All Nations Praise Ministry in Virginia, USA. I've heard this woman preach the word of God so many times, and I can say she's a fantastic speaker, a fantastic teacher, and a motivational speaker. I mean, when you listen to her, you just get encouraged. You're so welcome to the Today's Woman Show. Finally, I've been telling you about it for a very long time, and I'm so glad that you happen to be in Ghana now, and I can have you on my show. It's such a privilege, and everybody watching will be so blessed. So you're very welcome, and thank you for accepting my invitation. Thank you. Like I said, Apostle Rita, she is a fantastic motivational speaker. Now, she's one person you can, cry, you can run to to cry, and she'll just lift your spirit up. But what I really love about what you're doing is your outreach work, which I think is so amazing. I want us to talk a bit about that before we even start talking and everything. So I find it so amazing and so humbling, you know, how you can come all the way from the U.S. with how many pairs of shoes and go all the way to the north you know, I saw pictures recently, and to see all these children, you know, barefooted, you know, and like just reaching out like they want a pair of shoes. And the joy, and I was showing it to my brother and, and my husband, and, and my, my husband was like, oh, look, look, look at this child. I mean, he was literally like, oh, you know, for the pair of shoes. And I thought that that was so, I mean, that is genuine kindness. And you come all the way from the U.S. So what sort of, um, what, what led you to start this outreach uh, ministry? Well, I think um, growing up, it has been something on my heart. I wasn't born into a rich family, to say. And um, I struggled a lot to get to where I am now. Mm. So for me, looking at people, there are so many areas I look at when I see somebody. I don't look down upon anyone. I love everyone. Because I know God can change the story of anybody at any time mm. so for me to put a smile on somebody's face i don't know who they'll be someday mm. and you know it goes on and mm. on but it has been my passion to make somebody smile mm. Mm. that's amazing but you know what led you all the way to the north though because you could have done mm. it in accra you could have done it in cape coast you know but you it's, it's such a far journey anyway. So it's almost like purposeful, purposeful like intentional. Like I'm mm. going all the way to the north to make these children happy, to make them smile. And also, they are also led to Christ, right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Many years ago, I started. And I started in the central region. Okay. And um, we did it for a while. I faced some few challenges. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I didn't have much support. Mm. So I stopped. Mm -hmm. But by the grace of God, I have a, a pastor friend, mm -hmm. he's from the north. Okay. And then another brother joined the church from the north. Okay. And uh, all these years, we, have the, we had the desire to go to the north, but it looked like the door was not open. Mm -hmm. But when that brother came, he introduced me to one great man of God in the north. Okay. And um, they invited me. And I went down there, and when I got there, I said, this is this it. Is the faith. This is this it. This is the because faith. Because the, the, there are so many people and so many villages. And, I mean, my heart was broken when I saw kids with no shoes, kids, you know, no clothes. Mm. I mean, I'm not saying it in a bad way. Mm. I'm just saying it in a way to mean that we can change their stories, yeah. you know. Yeah. So I looked at them and I said, I want to launch out into that ministry also mm -hmm. because we, we, we went, the first time I went, we had um, a conference and everything. And then they introduced me, they pushed me into the village a little bit. So sometimes that time I'll use my own money to do something. Mm -hmm. And then I got to a point, I said, no, I want to do Chaluwate project. Mm -hmm. People did not understand flip-flop and I said that is what I can afford now mm. because I didn't have the support mm. and I think that was um, last year so last year I bought a lot of chalotes and we ship things from the US oh, wow. so people contribute we wow. ship whatever they don't need they bring them and I have a nice brother who ships them for me mm. for the church mm. so we 
keep them and then when I come and I buy whatever I have to buy here, we add it to it and then we take it to the north. And you have to see the smile on I their faces. I saw some faces. of the pictures. I saw some of the it's pictures so a while ago and I thought, I thought, my goodness, this is love. Like this is actually love to think of somebody and to come all the way, to go all the way. Yes. And, you know, I just thought it was so, so, so beautiful. So let's talk mm -hmm. about like, you know, your, your, your life, like growing up and how did you end up a pastor? A very stylish <laughs> one, I have to say. And we're going to talk about that as well. <laughs> So, so, so tell me about, I mean, did you, did you, growing up, did you think that I'm going to be a woman of God, I'm going to be a pastor? Hmm. I have to pause a little bit, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. You know, growing up, I came from a family of five girls. Okay. I'm the second. And um, I don't know if I should start from there, but let's just throw it in. Mm. I had some challenges when I was growing up, mm. but this is what I realized. When my mother was pregnant with me, mm -hmm. she thought it was too soon because looking at my older sister and I, two years exactly mm -hmm. apart, mm -hmm. and um, she's 3rd October and 4th October. Oh, so you wow. can see exactly wow. two years. So when my mother was pregnant with me, she thought it was too soon. To have so another she baby. tried to abort me several times, but it didn't work. And um, she said there was an injection. At that time, the military is given. When they give it to you, the baby has to come. And this stubborn baby still did not come. So that's you. That's me. So even in the womb, my mother did not want me. So I came out premature. I was, she, she described me, she said, you were like an ant, you know, very tiny. Oh, so wow. there was really no desire or anything, you know, looking at this ugly thing, you know, mm. because when I was growing up, people used to call me ugly. And in Ghana, because, you know, I was born in Adabraka, so they used to call me Fum Fum ugly you oh know because goodness. that is how they saw me mm. so mm. growing up that is how i saw myself something or somebody not really wanted you know and my you mother felt it. i felt it because my mother did not hide it she she really demonstrated it i mean she didn't care about me you know she and my older sister was very beautiful. Come on, she was really beautiful. And when you look at her and you look at me, it looks like there is something. Well, I think you're very gorgeous. Well, it's Jesus. <laughs> Jesus did this. I can tell you, Jesus transformed my life. I give him all the glory. Yes. When people see me and I tell them my story, they oh, you look beautiful. Is Jesus. Wow. I cannot. So you actually, but I think as well that, like you're saying, I am seeing you from outside and I see beauty, but it's what you feel inside. That no, is what you see. It wasn't like that. No, growing up, well, I mean, I, mean I, I, I really think that um, sometimes the kinds of words that are spoken to us as children, and that's why sometimes a lot of the time when I'm speaking, I speak to mothers and say yeah. that as mothers, we should all be very mindful of the kind of things, oh, below, nenaya, chair, you know, all of those yes. things. Because, you know, it can really, really affect the self-esteem of the child. So even if, that's what I'm saying, even if the child is not as, you know, as what they are saying, the child begins to see that. Well, in my case, I think I did look ugly. Yes. Okay. I'm not. I'm not saying it on a bad note. I just want God to get all the glory mm, mm. because I did. And like you said in the beginning, He can just turn anybody around. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I was mm. because I was like a boy. Mm. I mean, people. I sometimes I'll be walking with my sister, and people will see us. I mean, everybody was attracted to her. Mm. There was no beauty. There was no glory. Mm. There, I mean, there was nothing. Mm. I didn't so you felt like forsaken. You felt like, you know, yes. like you went, you know. I wasn't wanted. I mean, mm. I was not wanted. My, my mother showed it. People around showed it because mm. they didn't see any nice thing about mm. me. So how did you come out of that? Well, <laughs> mm. I'm sorry. Well, after secondary school, I became very sick. I had a condition that I kept it to myself a lot, but people who were very, very close to me knew it. 
but it also added to the rejection mm. that I was going through mm. because I was sick and with the sickness there is no cure no doctor can help what, you what was it if I it may was ask? Vitiligo and oh, vitiligo. It, vitiligo and you know I was young um, 85 and you know my ears were becoming white I had it in my scalp I have it in my hands now because Jesus healed me mm. and wherever the patch comes it keeps spreading mm. so it was very difficult so you can think about it first of all I didn't like myself and now I have this condition mm. and growing up every sickness that hit the family came to me yes so if anybody was sick it was you I mean I was going through all those nasty stuff I just didn't understand so it was probably I mean I'm just thinking that it was I mean it was a very difficult struggle I'm sure but it, it was, was probably also God preparing you to be you know the woman that you are today i'm grateful to go yes I, um, yes 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 because I, um, I mean today look at you you know helping so many people yes. Wait, I've, I've i've been at many of your services i've i've seen you you know preach the word of god and like the passion and and the word is like a true teaching and it's just you know they're the, the just something that is just so powerful and strong and um I'm glad that you're sharing this with us and I am so grateful and humbled and I can't say thank you enough because a lot of women go through very, very, very difficult struggles but they hide it. And by hiding it as well, nobody can hear it to also mm -hmm. sort of relate to it, to say that, oh my goodness, I also went through it. Now, if she has gone through it and she has made it, it gives me hope and it gives me some kind of assurance, you know, and, yes. and everything. So I think that it's, it's amazing. It and, and thank you for, you know, letting us know, you know, but I'm just so, so amazed because I'm like, wow. I mean, if you hadn't said, you know, and gone into detail, you know, it's probably just like, you know, a generalized, you know, piece of information, but wow, but wow. But Jesus healed yeah. me. Yeah, he yeah. did, yeah. he did. Glory to God for he that, did. I mean, I- Whatever I have now is something to show to people that God is our healer. Mm. Regardless of what you are going through now, mm. it doesn't matter what the doctors are mm. saying, you mm. can still get healed yes. through Jesus. Yes, and the healing yeah. as well, I think it's not just physical healing. No. It can be emotional. He me emotional. Yes, emotional. Too. Because I otherwise that. you can so I hope you look in the mirror you say you see beauty now. Of course. I hope so. I'm sure I, I mean do. I really hope you look in the mirror and you're like, uh, uh girl I mean I tell people Wherever I go, I tell people, whatever you are seeing now is Jesus. Because I had, there was a time somebody said, I, I, I model for Jesus. You know, Jesus model. I was like, praise the Lord. I mean, come on, God has done something good. Let's showcase it. Mm. I've had times that people have seen me and they're like, I've been called into ministry, but when I see the pastors, I don't think I like the way they present themselves. So I don't want to be a pastor. But just seeing you, I, I, I've now accepted. And let's talk about that. Be. When I said stylish, and that's what I meant, because um, I'm into you know personal branding, you know image consulting. And a lot of the time, I get called by pastors to come and speak, you know, at women's conventions and things. And a lot of the questions that I get is about you know the stylish Christian woman. And I want you to educate us on, on, on that because I remember one time as well when when I got called you know, by the Lord, and I was so, like, you know, heavily evangelizing and speaking to everybody. I remember speaking to a friend of mine, and when I called her, she said, oh, me, me, per life, to She said, oh, no, 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 me, I like life. Like, you know, I can't come right now, and then my weaves and my clothes you and my see. shoes. And I was like, but who said you can't dress up? you know, just because you're giving your life to Christ. So maybe that's something you should probably, you know, educate us on, you know, that you can still be a beautiful, stylish woman and still be a woman of God and still be his daughter and still be an evangelist, still be a pastor, you know. So maybe you can tell us a bit about that because it's really because you are representing God, aren't you? Yes, yeah. I am. You know, a lot of people think wearing a long gown, covering your head, doing this, making yourself smell, I mean, not taking care of yourself and all those things is what draws you closer to God. God is holy. Mm -hmm. God is clean. I mean, our appearance should even attract other people to come to Jesus. Mm -hmm. I mean, people say so many things about me that I dress too much, I do this, but I've been on the other side before mm -hmm. when I didn't take good care of myself. I mean, it was ugly. When you get to a certain group of people, they don't even want to accept you mm -hmm. because of the way you look. you look. You can carry all the anointing, but it is your appearance. Your appearance have to 
you know, make people like you. So when you enter into a place, they look at how you are dressed. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I tell people, yeah. the person might not have, maybe just, they, that's all they have, but they have putting it together very well. Mm. So when they go out, people see them and they're like, mm, I want to, I, I want what you have. Yeah. And right there, you can tell the person, it's Jesus, you know. Yeah. So you can be a good Christian, mm. yes, and still look good I keep outside. saying that all the time, and I'm so glad you're here today to oh, confirm yeah. it. But I keep telling ladies all the time that your image, your image is your first, your number one selling point. So, I mean, as human beings, we are all judgmental. We are not supposed to yeah. judge people. But as soon as somebody walks into a room, you just, it's, you know, it's almost automatic. You just look at the person, and by the person's appearance, you put in your head, you form something in your mind mm -hmm. of the level of sort of respect you should give that person, basically. Exactly. Or you sort of give yourself, you know, the, the, you, you just sort of imagine who the person is or where they should be, yes. you know, in life. So it's really important that we take care of ourselves well and everything. Now, this is one I, I want to ask you as well. Like, I mean, in, in, in ministry, I mean, ministry has been a lot of men, 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 men for a very, very, very long time. <laughs> But now there are powerful women of God rising up. I go to the Lost Garden Ministry. My pastor is a oh, woman. Yes. I love you know, her. Apostle Leanne Kofi, another powerful her. woman of I God. Love her you know so what I mean? Much. So now there are so many powerful yes. women of God rising and everything. Have you ever felt intimidated in a way? So if you're going to a conference and then you looked on the bill and you saw that it was all men and you're the only female, will that push you back? Or what gives you the courage to come out? I'm saying this and asking this because there are probably women out there who probably also have a calling. They probably have an anointing. But they feel like, oh, no, 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 no. It's, it's for men and, yeah. you know. And, and, and this, this, this is your, your, you have a ministry. It could even be in a business. It could even be in a corporation. Mm -hmm. You know, but your, 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 your story would advise women in all walks of life. Yes, that's you true. Know, so what do, you, what do you think well, about that? When I started ministry, there were places that I went to, and these um, men, you know, it was all men, men, and they would just box me up, and I'll be sitting there, and everybody would be looking at me, ah, she the one preaching, because my husband kept pushing me, pushing me, and then when they would put me in some category that she's the woman, she can only do women conference, even now, mm. ah, I'm bigger so than women conference. I can do everything, you know, and they just want to box me in women conference. Mm. And let me tell you, uh, I can do everything. Mm. Pastors conference, whatever mm. God gives me, he gives me the grace to do it. Yes. But it's like they wanted to limit me. But by the grace of God, when you stand there, the anointing will speak. Mm. And then they'll be like, wow. You know, yes. and then the next time they'll give you the opportunity again. So let me say this. If you feel like God has called you, mm -hmm. make sure that you humble yourself mm -hmm. for God to prepare you. Mm -hmm. Because you face challenges along the line. Mm -hmm. Even in the midst of women, there are some who are mm -hmm. ahead of us. And sometimes when we meet them, they, they intimidate you. Mm -hmm. They don't even want to give you the chance to also come up. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying it in a humble way. Mm -hmm. Because for me, what I, I want to do now for women in ministry or those who are coming after me mm -hmm. is to encourage them, for them to know that whatever it is, you can come up. Yeah. Depend on God. Mm -hmm. Don't depend on anybody. Yeah. God is the one who can promote you beyond your wildest imagination. Mm -hmm. When you put mm -hmm. your focus or your eyes on human beings, they will disappoint yes, you. Sure. Put your mm -hmm. eyes on God. Mm -hmm. If God wants somebody to help you, he will cause mm -hmm. the person not to sleep. Mm -hmm. They will help you. Yeah, wow, wow, wow. Now, I like to um, talk about um, emotional healing. Mm. You talked about healing a lot. You talked yes. about, you know, I yes. mean, God has healed you in so many different ways, oh, yes. physically and everything. Yes. But there are so, women, so many women out there who are hurting. You know, oh. they are burning. Yeah. They, are, they are almost killing themselves out of bitterness, out of pain, unforgiveness. Just generally, I mean, human beings, you know, mm. they, they, you know, women are naturally, we are just very, very emotional oh, people. Yeah. So what might hit us will not hit a man. A man, you talk to a man about it, you're like, oh, but what's a big deal? Yes, you know, so but we are very, very emotional yes, beings. So yes. how does somebody, and I want you to talk to the ladies out there, you know, so how does somebody who probably is watching this and probably crying within herself, how does she come to a point where she can say that, you know, I, I let go of it. I let go <laughs> of it. You see, 
one of the things is I first had to forgive my mother mm. because because of what I went through growing up I was always telling myself if I grow up and I get money hey this woman She'll smell pepe. You know, that, that was what I wanted. I wanted to be a big woman and I wanted to like also almost like prove let, a point. Exactly. Like show, that you know, I've mm, been through this, but mm. that is, this is who I am today. Mm. But when I accepted Christ, that was the first thing because emotionally I was broken. Mm. I mean, I, I, I didn't have anything there. So I was a Christian, but inside I was always crying. Mm. Crying because... I didn't know how to come up. Mm. So one day, we went to a program, and God told me. I started crying, and God said, go and see this brother. At that time, I was walking with another brother, you know, with the same name. So I thought, but he knows my story already. What am I going to tell him? But then, all of a sudden, they mentioned the person's name. And so after the service, I went to him. And as soon as I opened my mouth to say, God said I should, then he started, just forgive your mother. He did this it. This what I he was it. telling you. All, that is all the prayer. So I had to pray, Father, I forgive my mother. The tears were running down, pouring down. And by the time I finished, that pain had mm. left. Mm. So we and had I, to forgive. I went so home forgiveness. and I told my mom, I love you. Oh, my goodness. And that is how I, I became wow, free. Wow, wow. I mean, if I may ask, um, did she know what she was doing to you, though? Because sometimes, like, we hurt people, and it's not intentional. She did. You know, it, 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 it's not intentional. She did. Mm. I think she did, but she didn't see what I was going through. Mm. I'm sorry to say this. Mm. At one point, I tried to kill myself to commit suicide. I was in Form 1, and it was the pain was so bad to the point that... I wanted to end my life because I was young. Mm. I didn't understand. I didn't have anybody to talk to. Mm. I didn't have anybody to help me. Mm. And you know, even when my mom was with all the other siblings and they are talking, as soon as I get there, she will stop talking. It's like you are not welcome here. Mm. I was the one doing all the donkey job, but still she didn't give me or show me any love. Mm. So one day it happened and I was just so tired. So I went to my father's medicine chest and I opened it and I picked so many of the medicine, rheumatism, this, I put them all together, counted them, 37, swallowed them. And it was like, write a note. I said, no, who cares oh, wow. if I die or not? And I swallowed it all down. So in the evening they came to wake me up to come and as usual cook because that that was my area mm. come and cook and when i got up the ground was like that i, I mean everything was it's just easy. i couldn't see i was just so they took me to the doctor and the doctor said why why do you want to kill yourself wow. and i told the doctor everything and he spoke to my mom but it didn't change mm. Well, I mean, like, you know, it, it's, it's so heartbreaking, you know, but it, it is a story. And I'm sure it's, <laughs> yours is not the only story, oh, yeah. you know, um, and, and I'm so glad that you're sharing it with us because somebody, you know, watching is probably like, oh, my goodness, I wasn't the only one. I've heard this before, not as deep, you know, but I've heard of, you know, another lady who had sisters, but she was the only one ever that would be called to cook, to clean, to wash, you know, she was, and, and, and now, like, she's, she's really made it. And she's made it like, you know, she's so, so, so blessed and everything. So, you know, and as much as this is so, so heartbreaking and all that, I just want to thank you for coming and for sharing with all of us. And I think that a tip that us women should probably take from it is there is nothing that we'll go through that, you know, should break us. No you know, at the end of the day, I think it's probably like, you know, a, a, a training. It has made me stronger. It has made you stronger. Yes. yes. Now I can face anything. Wow. I'm not afraid mm. because now I know the one who carries me. Mm. And I love my mother so, so, so much. Oh. I love her. I wish I could do so much for her. She's still alive? She is alive. Yeah. And I thank God 
for her life and I thank God for all that I went through mm -hmm. because it has made me a better yes, person yes. and now I can understand other people who are Continue. going through pain mm -hmm. when I'm preaching the word of God ministers to me first mm. before I even throw it out mm. to people. Mm. Because if you don't understand what somebody is going through, you can't get them out. Mm. So do you find that such people or people who've gone through what you went through are drawn to you? Does it happen? Not really. Not all the time. I mean, for me, I am able to reach out to everybody. Mm. But, you know, because that's the word. The word, you, you are able to spread it. Yeah. Rich people will take it. Poor people will take it. People who have suffered, people in pain, people who are facing challenges. Yeah. It all comes to forgiving yourself, yeah. knowing who you are, yeah. knowing the God you yeah. serve, and yeah. what he can do for you. Amazing, amazing. So finally, what I'd like you to do is speak to women out there and tell them, Talk to them about loving themselves, appreciating themselves as they are. Well, the Bible says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. You know? Mm. So when you look at the two, fearfully. So some people, they are fearfully made. But the good <laughs> thing is God made them. Mm. Wonderfully made. Mm. God made them. The first thing you have to do is you have to love yourself. If you don't love yourself, who is going to love you? Mm. Nobody mm. will love you. So love yourself and tell yourself, I can make it. Mm. I will make it. Mm. I can do this. Come on now. I am beautiful. Mm. I have what it takes to get there. That is number one. Mm. You are coming up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What that person has done, I will force. I will push. Whatever it takes, I will also... Mm get to that so point motivate don't, and inspire uh, yourself. don't put yourself down mm. because nobody wants to be a friend or somebody who is always complaining yeah. or somebody who is yeah. a burden on them yeah. you have to pick yourself up before somebody can come and help yeah. you thank you so much oh my goodness i mean you should probably write a book it will you come probably, soon. Oh my goodness! You should probably <laughs> 2020 write. Twenty twenty, we will in Jesus' you, you should, name. You should probably write a book because your story is deep. I wow. mean, unfortunately, we you know we we don't have enough time. It's okay. But would have had to go on and on and on. It's just been awesome having you. And I hope somebody watching, even if one person is blessed by this, even if even if one person says to herself, "Oh my goodness, I can make it and I can become you know more than what everybody else is seeing me as." That's so so important. But ladies, one thing that I pick from this really is sometimes we really need to close our ears to the negativity around us the painful thing is sometimes the negativity and the pain can come from the people closest to us the people that we feel or we think should love us the most but the most important thing is you are aware of who you are and your creator that's if you're a christian you believe that god you know is you know the final say of everything of your life love yourself there is nothing else above that we'll be right back The human skull, a bony structure forming the head of the human skeleton, supports the structures of the face and forms a cavity for the brain. The brain is contained in and protected by the skull bones of the head. Head molding is a practice where the heads of babies are pressed with warm water to give it a particular shape. Head molding of babies, though outlawed in hospitals, remains a common practice in homes in Ghana. Gertrude was overjoyed when she gave birth about a month ago, but of great concern to her was a baby's irregular shaped head as she chose to describe it. She said health workers who attended to her at the hospital cautioned her against molding the head of her children, but her mother insisted. Gertrude 
na wo mua na wo mua tika kran 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 na nyina be mua children with irregular shaped heads are the butt of jokes among their peers in school and Gertrude did not want her child to go through that experience but a pediatrician, Dr. Marilyn Marbel Wilson, explained babies' heads cannot be molded through pressing. Scientifically, it's not, it's not helpful. It's not, it's not going to do anything. Of course, if a baby is left on his own all the time and he comes out with an elongated head, compared to one who is being molded and has a, a rounder, smoother head, aesthetically, it may look better. She said the practice is dangerous and should not be encouraged. That part of the head and there are two. There's one behind the posterior fontanelle and there's one on top. The posterior fontanelle, most people do not know about it because it closes very early. By three months, it's closed. But the one in the front, which is the anterior fontanelle, can be open to one and a half years. But the point is that it's there for a purpose so that the brain can grow. A baby is born with about a third of an adult's brain size and it needs to grow. So if that weakness or the fontanel is closed too early, the brain can't grow. An estimated 700,000 children suffer from cerebral palsy, one of the major consequences of the head molding according to experts. However, there's no data on how many children develop complications as a result of the practice. It's been such an emotional episode today, I should say. I was really getting emotional. But what I really took from all of this is that you should first love yourself. That is what is really important. You have to love yourself. So many people go through so many different kinds of struggles, but we need to really appreciate who we are despite what anybody else might say and to believe that you know we have been created for a purpose and there's nothing that can dim our light so ladies this is what we have for you today you know really keep your head up and keep telling yourself you are beautiful because you are and you are today's woman. Thank you so much to my sponsors, to Movin Pick Ambassador Hotel for always giving us a room to shoot this. Uh, thank you so much to GTP and to Yaz. And don't forget to watch it next week, Saturday. I'll be looking out for you. It's at 11 a.m. on TV3 and DSTV Channel 279. Have a blessed weekend and enjoy.